quick revision video on addition polymerization. So we'll start with some essentials. Alkenes form polymers by addition polymerization. Addition polymers are very long molecules made from many thousands of alkene monomer units that are joined together. And in the process, the pi bond of the carbon carbon double bond breaks and that allows monomer units to add together. So in general terms, your monomer, it's best to represent it like this, I'm going to mention this a few times, make it look like an ethene molecule. So your carbon-carbon double bond with your groups, your four groups attached to to each carbon, and that would be the repeat unit of that polymer. So the little n just stands for a very, very large number. So typically, it's around about 50,000. You see there, as we said, from many thousands of alkene monomer units. And don't forget the end bonds. So this bond here, it's really important that you stick that through the bracket. And we see that on the other side. And what that does is it shows that this continues. So your next repeat unit on this side will be there. And your next repeat unit on this side will be there. So for the next part of the video, we're going to look at sort of typical things that you would get asked to do. So the first one is to draw, draw repeat units from monomers. So you'll notice there down the left hand side, we've got two monomers, two alkenes, uh, propene and tetrafluoroethane. So the best thing to do, I think, is to make it look like ethene. So propene sort of in this sort of ethene style looks like that. And then that makes it really easy to draw the repeat unit. And remember, don't forget your end bonds. So the name of that polymer would literally be polypropene. So you just stick the word poly in front of the alkene that it's made from. Tetrafluoroethene, on the ethene style, it looks like that. So the repeat and it looks like that. Remember, don't forget the end bonds. And that would be called polytetrafluoroethene. Another typical thing you get asked to do is to um, draw the repeat unit and the monomer from a polymer chain. So I've got a length of a, an addition polymer chain here. So basically we've got to identify sort of what's repeating. So you can see when we get to this point here, we're starting again. So any of these sort of sections here would be um, a repeat unit. So I've gone for that one there. So to turn that back into the monomer, we literally do the opposite of before. So we're going to lose the end bonds. I'm going to put the double bond back so we get that. If you're interested, that's called ethenol, not ethanol, because it's got the carbon carbon double bond there, so it's called ethenol. So the polymer would be called polyethanol. So we'll finish this section with a couple of exam questions, typical exam questions on addition polymerization. Well, I've just answered the first one there. The type of polymerization is addition polymerization. Draw a circle around the repeat unit, so that's identical to what we've just done. So any of those would do. Identify the monomer that forms polymer A. So remember, we lose the end bonds and we put the double bond back. So we get that. So to name polymer A, we need to know what the monomer is called. So this here is butyl-1-ene. So it's obviously polybutyl-1-ene. And the other exam question I've got is this one here. So we've got to draw a section of PVC shown three repeat units, putting a bracket around one of the repeats. So there's the monomer, chloroethene. So turn that into the ethene sort of structure. And we need to draw three of these sort of joined together. So we're going to have six carbons essentially in a line. So we'll get that. Now notice I've put the chlorines here on the top there. There's no difference between that chlorine there or there. And the repeat unit, any one of those there. So the last section of the video, we're just going to look at the other aspect of the polymers topic, and that's the environmental issues. So some concerns, first of all. So polymers are great because they're cheap, they're readily available, they're very convenient compared to the alternatives, such as glass bottles, metal bins, paper bags, etc. The lack of reactivity of many polymers makes them really good for storing food and chemicals. However, that also causes a problem because when you throw them away, you dispose of them, um, they're non-biodegradable. So they stay around in the environment pretty much forever. 
And because of this, the polymer industry is having to clean up its act. Pressure from government and society has increased due to these environmental concerns. So I'm sure you're aware of lots of examples of this, but I've picked out a few here. So there's a newspaper headline about microplastics being the most common waste found along the Mediterranean coast. A couple of examples of what the government's doing about it. So the green picture there. So shops from 2015 had to charge for plastic carrier bags rather than just give them away. And the government's launched a plan to ban plastic straws, cotton buds and stirrers. And then more recently, the Glastonbury Festival has actually banned plastic bottles from um, its site. So you have to use reusable bottles now for water and things like that. So if we move on to dealing with waste polymers now, there's a specific problem with chlorine-based polymers. So when you burn these polymers, such as say PVC, polyvinyl chloride, that releases hydrogen chloride, not chlorine, which is a common mistake. That's a highly corrosive gas, and they can also release something called dioxins, and they're, they're very toxic as well. Not all polymers are easy to recycle. And because they're made of fossil fuels, they've got a high energy content. So they reckon around about 14% of waste polymers are burnt or incinerated. The energy is recovered, that produces heat, and then that heat's used to make steam, which is in turn used to make electricity. So energy recovery is, an, is another way you can deal with waste polymers. And another one is called feedstock recycling. So that is where you turn the polymer back into the original monomer. So for example, polyethane turned back into ethane. And then that original monomer can be used as a chemical feedstock. So that's a reactant or raw material for another chemical process. And then finally, the future of polymers. So it's important that we lose this reliance on making polymers from crude oil. Finite resource, that's so going to run out. So future polymers should be obtained from renewable and sustainable alternatives. So an example of that is bioplastics, which are made from plant starch, cellulose, plant oils, and proteins. They should also be able to be broken down in the environment. So we need to develop biodegradable and photodegradable plastics. So biodegradable polymers may contain an OH group and that can form hydrogen bonds with water. And obviously that helps it break down. And photodegradable polymers, they contain additives such as C double bond O, which can absorb light. So when they absorb the light, the bonds vibrate and that weakens the polymer and helps it start to break down.